So, I watched me another one of these debates. This time it was Mike Winger versus Matt Dillahunty. Is there evidence for the resurrection of Jesus Christ? Now, forgive me for saying this out loud, but I gotta say this again. To demonstrate the reality of the resurrection using evidentialist means in a debate, this is not an achievable goal for the Christian. If your goal is to reinforce the non-belief of the atheist, go for it, because that's the only thing that is going to possibly occur from that debate. The atheist is going to walk away from the table more convinced that the resurrection didn't happen. Why? Because it's not an achievable goal. No amount of material facts is going to produce the conclusion that somebody rose from the dead. I repeat, no amount of material facts is going to produce a reasonable conclusion that somebody rose from the dead. Why? Because it's not reasonable. It's not plausible. Any atheist worth his salt is going to come up with a thousand better explanations, even if they grant you all the facts. Why? Because it's not actually possible. It is by definition a miracle. Remember, a miracle means a violation of the laws of physics. So it is something that actually is not possible. Not only is it not plausible and not believable, it's not actually possible. That's what makes it a miracle. Now, if you're an atheist listening to this and you go, ha ha, I won. We won. I told you. I want you to think more clearly about believability and plausibility. Because Hume has deceived you and he has misled you. Believable, believability, plausibility, and reasonableness, in the best case scenario, have at best, at best, a tenuous relationship to reality itself. They're a good starting point for trying to figure out what's true, but that's all they are as a starting point. At best, they have a tenuous relationship to reality itself. There are plenty of things that happen in this life that actually occur and are real and are facts that are not plausible, not believable, and not reasonable to assume. If you knew all the circumstances going into it, scientific methodology, cause, laws of cause and effect, yes, those all apply. But you don't know all the hidden laws of cause and effect that go into any given set of circumstances, and you can't have access to them. So what on the surface you see is oftentimes not plausible and not believable at all, nor is it reasonable to assume, and yet it is what happens. I can think of thousands of examples of this in history right off the top of my head. Here's one. If we were in Bavaria in 1928, and I said to you, you see that funny looking street preacher in the Munich jail cell? The guy writing the book right there? He said, yeah, what about him? 1933, he's going to become Chancellor of Germany. He's going to plunge Ger Germany into World War II. He's going to be single-handedly responsible for the death of six million people. You would say, Craig, you wet look crazy. You wet look crazy, Craig. There's no way on earth that that is true wouldn't even be remotely plausible to you, wouldn't even be remotely believable, and yet it's exactly what happened. That's how reality actually works. Again, plausibility, believability have a very tenuous relationship to reality in the best of circumstances. Oftentimes they do not match at all. Give you another example, a little closer to home. A few years back, I said to you, see that guy descending down the staircase? <laughs> About to start his presidential campaign, the reality TV star? Yeah, you know where I'm going with this. He's going to easily win the Republican primary and become the next president of the United States. You know what you tell me? No, no way. Don't believe it. It's not believable. It's not plausible. There's not a single person who would believe me. And, and yet, here we are. Reality does not match plausibility and believability. Sometimes it does. It's a good starting point to find out the truth, but that's all it is, a good starting point. So why do we, the Christians, believe it? Here is a reasonable assumption. Here is a reasonable set of beliefs. If God exists, I just said, if God exists, it is perfectly reasonable to assume that said being would have powers far beyond the scope of the human imagination. 
it is perfectly reasonable to assume that that being could potentially at least bend the laws of physics at will. And it's also reasonable to assume that he may so do for no other reason than to demonstrate his sovereign power and his majesty. And he may pick specific times and places to do it. And those workings would be mysterious. Those are all reasonable assumptions, given the facts. So, why do we believe said being exists? Well, it's different for different Christians. But we never work backwards from the most miraculous thing you can think of. It is not a reasonable thing. Somebody rose from the dead, therefore God exists. We start from the conclusion or the inference or the knowledge, if you will, that God actually exists. Now, why we believe that is different for different people. My own particular set of circumstances, I believe and I maintain wholeheartedly that said being made himself real to me. 100% real to me. And given that as the logical starting point, it's perfectly reasonable to assume that that being could have powers far beyond the scope of the human imag imagination. That is perfectly reasonable. Now, you can disbelieve me that the being made himself real to me. That's fine. I accept that. I really honestly don't care if you believe me. That's what me and the other Christians part ways too. I don't care. Then don't believe me. It doesn't matter to me. But that's where... The, the Christian experience come from. Remember, Paul said, I come to you not with the, the convincing words of man, but with demonstrations of the power of God. Demonstrations of the power of God. You cannot convince somebody that Jesus rose from the dead by evidentialist means. Well, Paul said so. They don't believe Paul. Well, the Bible says so. They don't believe the Bible. You are never going to convince somebody of a miracle using, using those ty that type of methodology. The reason why we, the Christians, believe that a miracle can occur is because we have come to the belief that God exists through some other means. That would be the best starting point if you want to convince somebody about the reality or the truth that undergirds your faith. That's all I'll say on the subject for now. Amen.